Hello and welcome to today's Polkadot Eco Update video or maybe I should say Kusama Eco Update video uh, where we're gonna take a look at the price of DOT, uh, also KSM on Binance uh, just to kind of give you my thoughts on where things may be going and then we'll talk about Shida Network and the latest updates we've got with Shida Network. We'll take a look at their live roadmap to see what's going on with the status of the crowd loan distributions because that's probably what you're uh, wondering about unless you already have that information of course if you're already on their telegram group you likely asked or you likely saw the messages there and you already know what's going on uh, but we'll cover it anyway as we always do on this channel uh, so to take a look at dot here on the usdt pair on binance so we can see that it had this really really nice pop ever since it had a dump to ten dollars and 37 cents and actually if we look around this area here uh, of the, where actually had that dump we can see that it had a bit of a support here so that actually held nicely uh, of course if bitcoin would have dumped more then we could have broken below this support here and then we could have gone even lower to the previous levels which are like six dollars right but thankfully we didn't go that low uh, especially if you're a large bag holder of uh, dot but of course if you had some a spare stable coins you are likely looking forward to that dump right in order to buy more many people are waiting for under ten dollar prices myself included just to scoop up more ahead of the auctions of course so that we can bid for all these awesome projects like uh, akala maybe moonbeam because we don't know if they're gonna hold the crowd loan after all on uh, polkadot they've yet to decide that and they've yet to inform us they're likely gonna do a crowd sale if they do a crowd sale then it is pretty nasty because it's on a first come first served basis and uh, we know how those turned out like i've tried to take part in one on coinlist for centrifuge before and it just didn't go well but anyway to get back on the price uh, talk here so we can see that we're doing quite okay right we're ar around 21 dollars here as you can see uh, however we do have the 200 day moving average here on the one day chart so we could be struggling to break past that and also we've got some resistance here at this area here on the 25 dollar to 26 dollar range and also over here if you can check here we had these dumps here to this area which was acting as support this is the 26 25 to 27 dollar range here uh, we could see you had these dumps here and then we bounced back up so these have now become resistance which were acting as resistance when we tried to break past them over here as you can see and we couldn't so we dumped back down so perhaps now we may have the strength to get this far but it's all btc dependent because remember whatever bitcoin does the rest of the altcoins do unless something extreme happens to that specific altcoin unless someone like elon musk decides to talk about them then things could change and then ta doesn't even matter because it's just going to break past that uh, resistance area like through butter uh, so yes uh, we could expect 27 dollars here if we do go in the bullish trend if we continue on this bullish trend if not then we could break down below once again uh, and we're likely going to get to around 15 dollars here 15 to 17 dollars range I would say maybe like 16 to 17 here based on what we've got here on this chart uh, so that may actually hold quite okay and we also have this area here which will now act as support so as you can see here this is between 16 and 17 here so I would say in the bearish scenario 16 17 in the bullish scenario 27 dollars uh, that's what we could be expecting in the next uh, day or two maybe even more uh, who knows right it all depends on how things are moving uh, because you could just potentially see a large green candle here which could just take us there but i i highly doubt it especially with something like dot which is very liquid uh, it is harder to move the price right uh, next let's take a look at ksm bitswap is the hottest new way to trade tokens crawling all the top decentralized exchanges bitswap will get you the very best price and value for your trades bitswap is changing the game try it now at bitswapdex com see how that's been doing so ksm has been performing quite well we did bring be above 200 dollars which is awesome to see especially considering that over a million dot has already been locked up so more and more people are now accumulating dot uh, or sorry kusama ksm ahead of the second batch of the part chain auctions so with more accumulation then of course it's just going to be less on the market to trade so there's going to be more volatility of course the dumps could be wilder but also the pumps could be wilder so you got to look at it from both options there uh, from both sides so again on the one day chart we've got the uh, 500 day move 200 day moving average here as you can see 
Uh, if we do get to it, then uh, it would mean we would actually touch around the $300 range. So that would be awesome. Uh, but you got to remember that we have some resistance here around this area. If you check uh, this area around 250 here is acting as a resistance. Uh, but also this area here, right? We've got a, li a little bit of resistance here. And as you can see, uh, we've actually tried to break above this. Uh, we couldn't at the time. Then we managed to break above it. But now this area, as you can see, is acting as resistance because we just can't seem to uh, break above it. So we're struggling around that same area once again. But of course, if we do uh, break above this, then it's very, very bullish for Kusama. Now, if we do break above it, uh, then yeah, we could expect a $270 range, as you can see here, because that's the next point of resistance. And if we're on the bearish trend, uh, we could expect another dump to the uh, low 200 and perhaps even lower, perhaps even 180 here, as you can see uh, around this area here. So yes, uh, that's pretty much it from Kusama and Dot. Again, as always, let me know in the comments below what do you think uh, of the market sentiment in general? Are you bullish or are you bearish? Uh, and next, let's talk about Shida Network because this is what I wanted to cover. I haven't covered in quite some time. I have only contributed a little bit of KSM because unfortunately I didn't have that much KSM left at the time of uh, the crowd loan for Shida Network. So I just contributed a little bit of KSM. I did actually get a distribution. You too should have gotten the SDN distribution if you check your Polkadot.js wallet and you go to Kusama and Parachains. On the drop down, you'll see Shida Network. And then over there, you will see your distribution. However, it is locked. You are not able to transfer it. SDN is not trading on any exchange yet. You need to wait. And this is what we're going to talk about in today's video. And this is the Shida Network Roadmap, of course. Uh, just like with Corora and just like with Moon River and just like with Bifrost and any other projects, you're going through different phases uh, once successfully uh, bonding or upgrading to a parachain. As you can see here, this is phase one, which has all been finished. Uh, phase two here, as you can see, they finished the distribution. Again, like I said, we do actually see them in our wallets. We just cannot transfer those SDN out. And... Um, uh, one of the other phases that we need to wait for, actually as part of phase two, we need to wait for step seven, uh, which is the enabling of balance transfers. And I think once this happens, then that's when we're likely going to see as the SDN token on Corora, on Qcoin, on OKX, and on MEXC exchange, which are the four exchanges that are supporting the parachain auctions. And uh, then we've got some more bullish news here with the regards to their roadmap. So if you look at phase three here, uh, we've got the Zenlink integration and this one here is the big one uh, is the Akala DEX integration. I do think they made a mistake here. I think they were trying to say Corora DEX integration. They likely kept this uh, naming convention for uh, Astar Network and likely forgot to change it for Shiden uh, because this is the Shiden Network roadmap. So I don't know why they've called it Akala DEX integration. I highly doubt it's going to be the Akala DEX integration because the whole point of Shiden is that it should work with the Kusama ecosystem until the Kusama devs and the Polkadot devs come together and say, okay, let's make both Kusama and Polkadot interoperable. And then you could have these DAP communications between the two ecosystems. But until that happens, I highly doubt it's the Akala DEX integration. It's definitely the Karura DEX integration. In my opinion, this is likely a typo here. Uh, but please correct me if you think I'm wrong. And uh, please show me some proof of that because I, I just find this really odd, right? Considering that this is the Kusama ecosystem. And then phase four is the on-chain governance. And then, of course, the decentralized autonomous organization, uh, which is definitely good because that's where we're going to see more decentralization for Shida Network. And it's never going to be like 100% decentralized. Okay, that's something to keep in mind. Uh, but we're going to be moving towards more decentralization than we currently have because uh, just with any of these parachain auctions and uh, any, any, any of these um, parachains which are which are trying to move towards that step are basically need to go through different phases, right? As you see here. So one of these phases is to hand the power to the users, which is to remove the pseudo key, as you've probably seen, which is the super user key. So basically any kind of proposals that take place can be voted by the token holders, right? So, uh, and again, I am a bit concerned about that bit, like, and I could question it because a lot of the times um, it's usually the teams or it's usually the whales that are controlling those proposals, right? But yeah, of course, you know, remember the team can actually vote uh, even with their locked tokens, right? The, the teams can vote for those proposals. And you know, the teams are larger backholders than you, more than likely. 
and uh, even if 20 people like us would be bidding against the team let's say for example you're not happy with a specific proposal in most cases the team will still likely win so uh, this is this is one thing that i wanted to talk about in the sense that even when we have these uh, decentralized proposals you know there still there still is some manipulation right from that from that side and it is what it is right you can't change it uh, the only way you could likely change it is maybe if they limit the number of contributions that the team could do but uh yeah i don't i don't realistically see that happen to be honest so uh, yeah aside from that uh, they do have a lot of updates again if you follow them on medium here you can see that martin henskens who's actually uh, also an admin in their telegram channel he's very active here and of course sota Wat watanabe who is the ceo or one of the co-founders of astar network previously known as plasm and also shiden uh, you could see they've got different updates here uh, one of the updates that i'm not too happy about but again it is just an, a palette calling with kylan network which is an oracle solution is with this uh, with kylan network right i'm not too happy with this partnership personally but again it's not really a partnership it's more about it's like a technical partnership i would say it's not like a, a strategic partnership because i just uh, you know kylan are kind of together with rio DeFi and mantra that when i try to stay away from those projects after hearing the FUD that I've been hearing, you know, and talking to a number of people who know what's going on behind the scenes, you know, and I just prefer to stay away from them. So uh, that's why I don't really talk about Kylan on this channel anymore. I uh, I initially did a video about them when before even finding out that they're actually partnering with Rio DeFi and with, Mant with uh, Mantra DAO. But uh, yeah, I mean, it is what it is, right? You discover later on and then you just stay away from them. So uh, yeah, that's it from today's video. Let me know what you think as always in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.